Hello, I'm Amy Wilde. We're out here in John Forest National Park in the Perth Hills, going to look for some critters once again. Follow me and let's see how we go. Here's a little meat ant and look, he's got the bum of a bee. Hmm, this is going to be a little take home dinner for the rest of his family. I've spent a bit of time looking through dead grass trees today just because they're such a great habitat. Whoa, look at them go, galahs. Just because they're such a great habitat for reptiles, particularly when it's a bit cold and overcast. They love hiding out in these things. As you saw last episode, we got that two-toed earless skink. So you never know. Let's see how we go. This is Burton's snake lizard, Lyellus bertonis. I am so excited, this is one of my favourites, and wow, doesn't he just look like a little velociraptor. This is actually Australia's most widespread reptile. They inhabit almost all of the country, except for a few little patches along the south. Wow. Now, as the name suggests, this is a lizard that we're looking at. Very, very easily confused with a snake, much more so than the burrowing skinks we've been looking at. Absolutely amazing. These guys have an incredible variation in colour range. So this guy unfortunately is relatively boring compared to some of them. He does have this lovely orange tail tip. But other than that, he's a relatively uniform grey. These guys can be beige, they can be cream, they can be brick red, they can be dark brown, they can be all different kinds of stripes. They often have a very striking white line under their eye. Absolutely stunning animal. Now, in telling him apart from a snake, there's a few more things that we've skipped. Obviously for this species, he's got an extremely long face, shaped like an arrow. There are no real Australian snakes that have a head shape, anything like that. You can see from the top. Very, very distinctive head shape. Also, almost all lizards have ear holes. Snakes never have those. So can you see that right where my fingernail is? Right behind the end of his mouth. That's a little ear hole. He's got a very fleshy tongue. He might have a tiny little fork at the end of it, but ultimately it's a thick, fleshy tongue as opposed to the deeply forked tongue of a snake. So he's very, very different. If you've ever seen one of these, he's completely harmless. Don't touch him, don't hurt him. Please, I'm begging you. They're absolutely striking animals. Having said that, they're harmless to us, but they are actually killers of other reptiles. They're lizard specialists and they even eat some snakes and they have a very special way of hunting they'll grab their prey by the midsection so the body and hold on to it until it suffocates and then they eat it head first it's quite brutal really and the amazing thing is they actually have a hinge right here under the eye that allows their whole jaw to collapse around the body of the animal amazing predators stunning and look what a model he is he's sitting so patiently Lovely. Let's put him back now. Here he is in situ or in his natural environment. How camouflaged is he? Off we go. Oh, he's so graceful. Love it. So this is the don't try this at home part. I am a trained professional when it comes to reptiles and animals. And as such, I have a pretty good idea about the habitats that they need as well as the dangers to myself and to them when it comes to searching for creatures. Even with dead things like this dead grass tree, it's very, very important habitat for all different types of animals. Always put things back exactly as you find them and never damage anything that you don't need to. Also remember, it is dangerous. You never know when a venomous snake or animal is gonna come out and I really don't recommend doing this unless you do know what, what you're looking for and you're with someone who's really experienced and can help train you and show you what to do. Or just watch me. It's a lot safer that way. Stick to the paths in the bush and you can still see heaps of great stuff without being in danger. Fantastic. Oh, cool. So this is actually a native millipede, very similar to the Portuguese millipedes that are unfortunately a big pest. So he's completely harmless. This guy's a lot bigger than the Portuguese millipedes, but oof, he can still secrete this fluid so it's still smelly. Can you see that yellow stuff on my fingers? That's been released by him. That's a defense mechanism. Most millipedes have this. And they basically let that out when they're a bit annoyed 
and phew, the stink and the terrible taste is enough to knock any predator off its feet. Doesn't need to be able to bite when it can do that. Cool. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Unfortunately, we've got to wrap up. It's about to rain, bit of drizzle already, but we already got to have a really great look at that meat ant. We had an amazing experience with that Burton snake lizard, and of course, we checked out that little millipede. Stay wild, and I'll catch you next time. Oh, 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 oh,